Now that you've practiced your crocodile stitch, it's time for the fingerless gloves. Let's make them. Ciao friends, Beth with Symbol Hooks, and today is all about my fingerless gloves that have a little crocodile scale going up the side. I just love these gloves. They're so comfy, they're so soft, and they're really fast, really simple. Use easy beginner stitches as long as you watched my tutorial yesterday on the crocodile stitch, you should be rocking. So I'm going to set all these aside and let's get started. All right, so this pattern, I am using Karen Simply Soft and I think this one is forest green. I don't remember because I have it rolled up. I'm just going to use a nice dark, this dark green and we start with a 3.75 millimeter hook. Even though Karen Simply Soft calls for a 5 millimeter we're going to go down to a 3.75 to make nice tight, nice tight stitches. So this pattern uses, right here, this is a Suzette stitch and here is my crocodile stitch. Alright, so we're going to start out, I've got my 3.75, I'm going to make a slip knot. Whoopsie. Make a slip knot on our 375 and get started. Chain 38. One, two, three, four, five, six. A little loosely, we are going to work in the back bumps. Seven, 37, and 38. So now we have a line. We just have a chain of 38. So what's fun about this is that for the crocodile stitch, you need to chain a multiple of six plus two, and for Suzette, you need to chain an even number. So 38 works out both ways, so that's perfect. So we're going to turn over our chain and find all these little back bumps. Just like I always do, I know it takes a long time, it takes much longer, but it makes a nice edge, so that's why I do it. So we're going to do a single crochet under every one of these bumps. So you'll end up with 37, all the way back down your chain to the beginning, and I'll meet you there in just a second. And there's my last stitch in the back bumps of my chain. So there we go. Just a nice little set of single crochets. And we're going to start on a Suzette, which is a chain one and turn your work, and a single crochet in that very first stitch right here. And a double crochet in that same stitch. So it was a single and a double and a skip this stitch and in this one we do a single crochet and a double in the same stitch. skip, single, and a double in the same stitch and follow that repeat all the way down. Skip, single, and a double, skip, single, and double all the way down to the end. I'll meet you at the last stitch. And in my last couple stitches, we're going to skip and a single and a double in the same stitch. Skip, single, and a double in the same stitch. And now when you have just these two last stitches, skip one and the very last stitch just gets a single crochet, not a double, just a lone single crochet. And there is one row of Suzette. It just has a little bit of texture, but it's still very simple, simple repetitive stitch that's a great beginner stitch. So now we'll go into the second row chain one and turn in this very 
very first stitch right here, we'll do a single and a double in the same stitch. Exactly the same thing we did the first time. Skip this one, single and a double in that same stitch. And again, we skip, single and a double all the way down. And we want to do this for a total of six rows of Suzette. So I'm going to let you go ahead and get your six Suzette rows. We already had one complete. This is the second row. You want a total of six and I'll meet you at the end of row six of the Suzette. And my last full Suzette stitch. There's a single crochet and a double crochet in the same stitch. We're down to our last two stitches. We'll skip this one and a single crochet only at the end. Here, I marked the very first and the very last stitch out here. Forgot to do that at the beginning, but stitch one and stitch 37. We're going to need those later, so I just decided to mark them while I was thinking of it. Okay, there's our six rows of Suzette, and now we're going to start on our crocodile stitch right here. So first, when you start with the crocodile, you're always going to do the posts first. Post row first, so chain three, which is going to count as our first post. Turn our work. And in the very first stitch right here, we want to do another double crochet. Chain one, skip two, and in that third one, we want to do another set of two double crochets in the same stitch. Chain one, skip two, and two double crochet. Chain one, skip two, Two double crochet. Chain one, skip two, and two double crochet in this stitch all the way down. And here we are at the last one. Skip two, and in this very last stitch, skip two, and this one is down here. Two double crochets for the last set of posts. Now I'm going to add, I'm, I have some Peyton's Lace, which is a sock yarn and I don't plan on making any tiny socks anytime soon. So I'm just going to add this to the scales that I'm making just to make them a little bit more interesting. And since this is so lightweight, it won't add a whole lot of bulkiness, but it'll be really cute. So what I'm going to do is back out that last stitch just a one part. I should not have finished this stitch with two loops on our hook. We want to add the green and go with, with both of them. So finish the stitch with the green and with the other color if you wanted to add something to your scales and make them have a little bit more definition or a little bit more pop of color. Alright, so now we finished our stitch. Now it's time to start the scales. So we're going to chain three. One, two, three. And turn our work. Find the outside post. And we're going to double crochet four times around that post. Since the first chain three counts as a stitch, it will be a total of five. Here's three. And four. And five. And we chain one in between our sets of five. Spin our work. So we can find this next post right here and double crochet five times around that post. So 
So there's our first scale. Very easy peasy. So in between our scales we cha chain one. And like we learned in my tutorial yesterday, all of this is repeat from exactly from yesterday. Skip these first set of two double crochet posts and go to the next one. Double crochet five around the right hand side post. Chain one in between our sets of five, spin our work, find the next post, five around it. Five double crochets around that post. Chain one in between our scales, skip this set of two posts, go to the next one, five double crochets around the right hand side. Chain one in between our groupings of five. Find the next post right there. Five double crochets around it. Chain one in between our posts or in between our scales. Skip this set and go right to the next one. Five double crochets around the right hand side. And five. Chain one and find the next post. Now we're done to our last two sets. There's a set right here. We're gonna obviously we're going to just do exactly the same thing we've been doing, so we're just gonna jump right over these. And in the center of this last set, sneak on through there, go five double crochets around the right hand post, four and five, chain one in between our sets of five, and then go find this very last piece that was all the way to the edge, and five double crochet around it. So there we have a set, one row of our dragon scales or our crocodile stitch scales. So to finish off that row, turn our work and just slip stitch right into the center of the very last stitch that you just did. Very last scale. Right in the middle of it. Just to finish it off and pull it in a little bit and make it look a little bit more rounded. I'm going to take these out. These are making a little bit too much noise for me. I'll have to put them back in later. Right now we have a row of scales. It's time for another row of posts. So we just slip stitch into this end right here. So we're going to chain three and double crochet into that same open space. So we have two posts, single crochet, jump over to the V right here that was unworked and work double, two double crochets into that space, making sure that you go around that single crochet from in between the scales also. Chain one, double crochet in every space along the way. I'm going to get two of them here. There's double crochet number two. chain one in between and the two double crochet in this very last scale that we need. One and two. So the post rows are amazingly easy. Just every little opening that you have along the way gets two double crochet. Let's start our next set of posts. Alright, so there's our first row right here and we have a second row of our posts. So now we're ready for row two of our scales and there's only three rows of scales on this whole glove so we're almost done with that part. 
So all we do is turn our work. Skip this first set of two, go to the next one, and five double crochets around the right hand post. One, two, three, four. And five. And so there's our first scale on row two. We just keep working, alternating each post set of two posts all the way down to the end. So there's a chain one in between. Skip this one, and we want to work around here. Five double crochets. And five with the chain one in the middle in between our sets of five. Find the other post and five double crochets. And five. So that that stitch is done. That scale is done. So chain one in between. Skip this one. Skip this set of two. Jump to the second one that's in between. There are two scales from the previous row and continue that all the way down. Right, and this will be the last scale on this row. Two, three, four, and five with the chain one in between and spin our work. Find the other post and five. That's our last scale for this row, but we have this one lonely set of two double crochets. That post is waiting to be used. Don't want it to just flap out there. So we're going to do a slip stitch into that V. And now our third row is exactly like the first row. So we'll get it started here. Chain three counts as the first post. Turn your work into that V. Do another one. So there's a set of two posts in this opening. Chain one. Go in the center of that scale with two double crochets chain one all the way down. Go in that V exactly like we have been the rest of the time. And this row is exactly the same as row one. And here is my last, there's my last double crochet in that scale. And then we just do a slip stitch to bring it close and make it a little bit rounder. Now I'm going to drop, I'm going to drop the extra sock yarn now. So I'm just going to cut it off, leaving enough of a tail that I can weave it in, in in a little while. I just wanted to have a little bit of an accent color here. It's kind of fun. I like it. It sounded like fun, so I decided to give it a try. Hold that down. There. So we're going to just start working with the green again. And now we're going to change back to doing a Suzette. So this row is very important. We have to even out all of our single crochets again so that we can start making Suzette. So how we do that, we want a total of 37 stitches. So we're going to chain one and single crochet. in that first opening once and twice. Now in the next one, right here, we want to single crochet three times. One, two, three, 
to. It would be like we were doing posts, but this time we're not doing posts. So you can still go in between the V and around everything. But it's just single crochets. So the first one is two, uh, two single crochets. The last one is two single crochets. Everything else down this way is going to be three. So here we go. In between or in the center of the scale, three single crochet. One, two, three. So and there's my very last one. Remember, the first one had two single crochets. Everything in the center had three single crochets. And this last one has two. So two on the outsides and three on the insides. That brings us back out to our 37 that we started with in the first place. Now we're going to do a Suzette again, which is a no-brainer, super easy stitch. Chain one, single crochet, and double crochet in the same stitch. Skip one, single, and a double in the same stitch. There's a single crochet and a double crochet in that same stitch. And skip one and our very last stitch is the one that I marked here. He gets just a single crochet. So there's a new line of Suzette. Again, just a little bit of texture, just a little bit of fun. This is the first row of Suzette right here. This we just started the second row. We want a total of 12. So I'll meet you up here in a couple of minutes. Here we are, we only have a couple stitches left of our 12, so it's a single and a double. In the same stitch, we have two stitches left, we'll skip this one, and the very last stitch just gets a single crochet. Boom. We're done! So mark these again. Again, the very first stitch Oopsie. The very first stitch and the very last stitch of our beginning chain row. So that's why I like to do the back bumps because then I get a real I get a real stitch looking thing here instead of just a like a half a stitch or just a just a little tiny piece. That looks like a real stitch right there, so it's easy to count, it's easy to find, and I marked the first in the the first one and the last one. So now we're done here. All we have to do is turn it into a glove because right now I just have a big rectangle. So turning it into a glove for one hand. You do it for one hand and then you do it for the other hand is the exact opposite. It's but it's very very simple. And we want to fold this inside out. So the pretty part is going to be on the inside. We're going to slip stitch all the way down on the inside and make our thumb hole. So there's my very first stitch. I'm going to insert my hook there. That's why I marked it. Alright, so I've got him ready. So to make one, one hand, the first hand, We, go, we went through this stitch and we're going to go through that stitch and bring everything through. So we're going to slip stitch. There was one. Let's slip stitch two. Going to slip stitch a total of seven, six, and seven through both sides. So that we have just that little bit right here at the top. Now we're going to make a thumb hole, which is really easy because all we're going to do is skip over these seven, the next seven with slip stitches. So 
So we're just going to slip stitch past one, two, three, four, five, six, and seven. So the first set of seven was through both sides. The next set of seven was just on one side, so we leave it an opening for our thumb. I'm going to skip seven on this side. So here's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So we want to work into this eighth stitch on the opposite side. All right. And again with the slip stitches. All the way down to the end. So that will be another 23 to get to the end. So 7 plus 7 plus 23. And I have two slip stitches left. Oh goodness. That's why it's important. That's why it's important to crochet a little loosely or chain a little loosely because I did a made it a little bit too tight and now I'm struggling. There we go. And there's my last one right here. Slip stitch. I'm going to take out this marker. We don't need him anymore. And we can just finish off. We'll weave in those ends in a little bit. And we just pull him right side out. So there we made a left hand. Because the thumb is right here, the scales are right here. For the other hand, you do backwards. When you're slip stitching these together, you slip stitch the 23 first and then skip seven and then slip stitch the seven so it'll end up being like this. Same exact rectangle for both. You don't have to do anything special except for your very last slip stitches to make a left glove and a right glove. Isn't that fun? So there we go. All you need is to adjust the very last slip stitches that you do to make a right hand glove or a left hand glove with the exact same pattern and they're so simple. They're very, very easy. Hopefully you enjoy. Thanks for stopping by. Thank you for supporting my small business. Please subscribe to my channel and turn on notifications so you find out what's coming next. And I'll see you real soon. Bye.